Welcome to another Burton's Media Group tutorial. We're continuing our series in Corona game development step by step. This is following the Star Explorer example that is on the Corona website. This is part six, which will where we will add sound effects to our game and also review the code to do background music if you should want to add that. If you are interested in seeing the written instructions, you can visit the Corona Labs website at docs.coronalabs.com forward slash guide forward slash programming forward slash 07. So Corona allows us two different methods for dealing with sound. You can preload your audio files, which is very useful for sounds that are short, um, won't consume a lot of memory, and are used frequently, such as perhaps an explosion sound that's in the game or a shooting sound. You can also load streaming information. Um, this is more appropriate for background music that's going to be played inside of it. Now, streaming does not store the whole sound effect in memory. It only loads a small section of it, and plays that, and continues loading that information from menu. For our game, at this point, I've only got two sound effects, and they're both sound effects, so we're going to load them into memory. We've got explosion.wave and fire.wave. They'll all go ahead and cover how to add background music to your game as well. There's lots of places that provide free sound and free music um, on the internet. Just do a search for free audio or free background music, and you'll be able to find all kinds of stuff, or you can use any of the great music editors to create your own background music that would be exciting with your game. So let's jump into our game.lua file. That's where our sound effects will be needed. And we'll go ahead and load our sound effects. So at the, towards the top, and you, we can place it anywhere in this opening section where we have all of our different sounds, we need to go ahead and preload or pre-create a variable to store the various sounds in. So we're going to have a local variable for explosion sounds and we're going to have a local variable for fire sounds. Then in create we need to go ahead and load these sounds in on the create call inside the app. So I've scrolled down to the create scene and after we pause the physics let's just go ahead and add that in. Where you add it in really doesn't make a lot of difference but for convenience I'm going to load it at the, towards the top of the scene create function. So our explosion sound will be set equal to audio.load sound and we'll load it from the sounds folder and it is the explosion wave. And let's go ahead and get the fire sound loaded. And now they're loaded into the system. Now all we need to do is play them when we need to do that. The explosion sound needs to happen in the collision, which of course makes complete sense. So let's scroll back up, find our collision section. There's on collision. And then we just simply need to insert these at the right location. So when an asteroid collides with a laser, we need an explosion sound. Audio.play explosion. There we go. And now we have our explosion sound. Now if you want to use the same sound effect for your ship exploding, you can of course do that as well. So we'll find the section that handles that where our ship collides with an asteroid, and again, below the dot equals true, we can add our audio. There we go. And now we have both set up for explosion sounds. Whoops, that needs to be explosion, not fire. All we need to do is add a fire sound when we are firing our laser. So again, I'll scroll up to the fire laser section. And again, anywhere in this, we just simply need to play audio play fire sound and now it will play the audio for firing a shot anytime that the player hits the play button and i mistyped audio on line 28 188 so let's fix that where we have a collision There we go. Nothing like a typo to mess up your program. There we go. We've got sound. Okay, so let's add some background music to our, our app. Again, back up here at the top where we are declaring our variables. We're going to create a 
variable to hold the background music. Now I don't currently have background music loaded into this, but usually this is going to be an mp3 file or another WAV file for playing your audio. Uh, it could be a WAV file, um, but usually mp3s are nice for doing audio files. So this will be our music track. And we'll scroll down to our create because that's when we want to start playing our music. Here's our show. Here's our create scene, and down here towards the end of that, we'll add our loading the music. So music track equals audio load stream, and then the name of whatever your background music is going to be. And you can generate that and load it in and have your own background music ready to go. Now it's best if you are going to play music during your game, you need to do a little bit of channel management to make sure that we reserve channels for the background music. So let's go ahead and reserve a channel for the background music. We'll jump over here to main.lua and just insert in here audio reserve channels. And we're just going to reserve one channel. So audio is now reserved. And we can go ahead and force what level we want the the volume to be at for that as well. So if we feel like it's a little loud for our gameplay, we can go ahead and adjust that. And we'll set it down to, let's say, 50% of what it normally would be and tell it that it this is only applied to channel one. So our reserve channel for our music. All right, we'll jump back here to game.lua and I'm going to Go down here to show. We've loaded the music up here in create, so in show we need to tell it to play the music. And we'll do that in our did phase. So it has already loaded and it's ready to start playing the game. So audio.play, music track, and we want this to play on channel one and loop infinitely. There we go. And of course, it's a good idea to stop the music if the player has ended or been killed and they're leaving the scene. This would be handled in the hide. So let's go over to hide and where we've got our remove event listener for collisions and we pause the physics. Let's do an audio stop. And that will stop the player as soon as, or stop the audio as soon as the player hits the menu or the high score or the game shifts to the high score. The only thing that we might want to also do is dispose of the audio so that it's no longer using memory. This can be done in the destroy scene and it's a nice, it's a good idea for memory man management. So we'll need to dispose of all of our audio. So audio.dispose, the explosion sound. We'll also dispose of the fire sound and we'll also get rid of our background music. And now we have gotten rid of all of our audio and freed up all the memory that audio uses. Audio can be very memory con consuming, so it is a good idea to get rid of it as soon as you can inside of your application. So that is our Star Explorer. We've now added sound effects to the game as well as a background music track. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below in the comment section. We have a lot more tutorials and lessons forthcoming. If you'd like to follow what's happening, you can follow us on Twitter at Dr. Brian Burton or Facebook at Burton's Media Group or follow us on our website, burtonsmediagroup.com. If you'd like notification through YouTube, hit the like or subscribe button. 